Welcome to today's ICANX Talks, uh, brought to you from uh, Beida in uh, Beijing. Uh, today we have the ACS Nano Rising Star Lectures. Uh, we have a terrific lineup for you from uh, Zheng Liu from Nanyang Technological University, Yingying Zhang from Tsinghua University, and Shelley Claridge from Purdue University. Uh, these are, are three uh, people we wanted you to hear not only uh, about their science, but we'll have a panel after the second talk uh, about how they were able to uh, make their careers move forward so quickly uh, and, and uh, how they choose the science that they do. So uh, I'm joined today by uh, Miso Kim, one of our earlier ACS Nano Rising Stars, who will uh, jointly host uh, this morning's talks uh, with me. And so uh, please join me in uh, welcoming our speakers and uh, thank you so much uh, for joining us. And thank you especially, of course, to Alice Zhang, who set up uh, these amazing talks to bring the world of science uh, together. So uh, yeah, here we go. Our first speaker will be Professor Yingying Zhang uh, from uh, Tsinghua University. Uh, Professor Zhang received her bachelor's degree in chemistry from Shandong University, and then uh, received her PhD in physical chemistry uh, from Beida. Uh, she was a postdoc at Los Alamos National Laboratory, and then joined Tsinghua University as an associate professor, where she's currently a joint faculty member in the Department of Chemistry and in the Center of Nano and Micromechanics. She's been awarded a National Science Fund uh, Excellent Young Scholar Award, Young Cutting Edge Nanochemistry Researcher Award, and then a, a national program for support of top-notch young professionals and young scholars of the Yangtze River. Uh, her talk today uh, will be exploring the potential of silk and a nanocarbon toward next generation wear wearables. Professor Zhang, uh, the floor is yours. Thank Paul for the kindly introduction. So now I should uh, share my screen. Okay. So uh, can you see it? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank Paul for the kindly introduction. And uh, firstly, I would like to thank Alice and Paul uh, for, giving, uh, for giving me this great opportunity to uh, talking about our uh, research. Uh, so uh, my title is Exploring the Potential of Silk and Nanocarbon Towards, Towards Next Generation Wearables. Uh, I came from Department of Chemistry of Tsinghua University. So uh, I can have many talks on flexible and wearable electronics. So I think uh, most of you uh, know uh, many things about it. So uh, flexible devices have the uh, characteristic of, uh, of flexible, uh, stretchable, and very uh, thin, and even can be uh, conformally attached on human skin. Based on this kind of devices, we can realize the, uh, the real-time monitoring of sports and health and uh, uh, applied them in human machine interfaces. So uh, we uh, all know that material are the basis to build every unit of the flexible systems, such as uh, sensors, uh, which is the active unit of wearable electronics. And uh, also the electrodes and the wires should also be flexible and uh, wearable and also the power systems. So um, considering the uh, characteristic of flexible electronics, the uh, material should be flexible and conformable. And uh, for electronics, they should be electrically conductive. Besides, we hope they are stretchable, lightweight, highly stable and non-toxic and human friendly. Uh, so uh, the typical flexible electronic material, uh, which are uh, mostly used till now, uh, can be, uh, can be uh, separated, can be divided into three uh, kinds. Uh, 
The first one is uh, conductive polymers. Uh, the second one is nano uh, carbon materials. And, the, and the, also the uh, traditional metal or semiconducting materials can be fabricated into uh, very thin and uh, stretchable structures by designing VV structures. So uh, every, um, every uh, material has their um, advantages and drawbacks. So my, my focus is uh, nanocarbon materials because um, uh, because personally, I have um, I have a long uh, research uh, history on uh, nanocarbon materials, including the CVD growth characterization and the manipulation of carbon nanotubes and graphing. Uh, for example, actually, uh, ten years ago, I published my first paper on ACS nano. Um, which uh, is focused, which is focused on the um, CVD growth of carbon nanotube uh, forest. Uh, it can be uh, spin into uh, carbon nanotube uh, fibers by a dry spinning process. Um, this is my first paper on SS Nano. Uh, so based on this kind of previous work, so my focus is nanocarbon materials, uh, and uh, we would like to explore the application of nanocarbons in uh, variable uh, areas. And so um, we all know uh, nanocarbon materials, they are flexible and electrically conductive, but for the application in variable electronics, we should uh, make them into micro scale materials, which are stretchable, wearable, and uh, uh, they, uh, they are hoped to be uh, human friendly. So uh, to achieve this goal, we combine nanocarbons with silk. Uh, silk is a, a material have long history, uh, especially in China. They are uh, a natural materials they, have, they are very strong and flexible, and uh, uh, it has a very good human friendliness. And the uh, silk fibers uh, can be easily made into textiles, uh, so it can be easy uh, for wearable uh, applications. So, uh, so using natural uh, silk fibers, um, various silk fabric can be uh, made. However, Silk is non-conductive, so um, this uh, may um, this uh, may uh, made it difficult for uh, its application in electronics. But silk can be uh, can be uh, made into a solution, and they can be dissolved into solution. And using this solution, they can uh, be made into various. They can be regenerated other forms, such as. Uh, nanofibers uh, or uh, transparent films or even uh, uh, or even uh, three-dimensional films. This give us a um, painting of room for uh, combined silk with other materials to uh, introduce new properties to silk. So uh, based on the above background, uh, our research uh, can be divided into uh, three uh, different uh, parts. The first one is that we use nanocarbon materials to design a highly sensitive electronic skin. For example, using carbon nanotubes and graphene to design um, pressure sensors or uh, other uh, uh, string sensors or uh, other sensors. And the second one is uh, we design high article structured carbon uh, materials, uh, especially um, uh, particularly, we are uh, interested in uh, fabrics for variable sensors. So we also uh, combine nanocarbons with silk to make composite materials and uh, design smart electronics. Uh, today, I want to focus on the uh, two colored part. Um, so now uh, let's see uh, high article structured carbon fabrics for wearable and stretchable electronics. Uh, I would like to start, uh, start this part uh, with, uh, with a paper published uh, several years ago. This is our first paper on carbonized silk fabric. 
uh, for uh, uh, variables. So uh, in this um, work, we uh, realized the carbonization of silk fabric and the uh, um, and the fabricate uh, uh, high performance string sensor. So uh, our uh, so why we do this? Uh, because we want to um, we want to uh, we uh, so we, we want to address um, a problem existed in string sensors. We all know our skin uh, are stretchable. For example, our uh, the human skin can be stretched uh, by more than seven uh, seventeen percentage, and our movements are also can can uh, are also um, accompanied by uh, the uh, string uh, mo um, by uh, by uh, the uh, tensile string. So, uh, for applications in variable electronics, we hope. Uh, the devices can have excellent basic functions. Besides, we need it flexible and uh, stretchable. However, for the reported string sensors, they usually either have high sensitivity or have wide strain. Uh, but it's difficult to have both uh, uh, high uh, sensitivity and uh, wide strain range. So uh, we analyze the, the uh, mechanism behind this phenomenon. We think the simple structure, the simple conductive structure of these sensors is the, ori is the origin of this phenomenon. So uh, we propose that if we use fabric structure, we may uh, got uh, three sensors have both uh, have has both of these two kind of uh, benefits. So uh, in order to um, prepare the uh, um, electrically conductive tactile, we think uh, we're thinking about uh, uh, whether we can use a silk fabric. So um, this image shows the detailed structure of natural uh, silk warm silk fibers. So natural silk warm silk fibers, um, they uh, contain uh, two parts. The first part is the outer layer it's silk sericin, and the inner layer is uh, it's silk fibrolin. So the silk fibrolin have very good uh, mechanical properties, and uh, they can be used, uh, they, and they can be uh, woven into the uh, normal silk fabric, uh, what we uh, used. Uh, so uh, the so uh, our work is firstly focused on the silk fibrolin. Uh, the silk fibrolin, uh, if we see its detailed uh, molecular structure, we can see there are um, there are uh, ordered bed sheet structure and disordered eye uh, and disordered uh, uh, helix amorphous structure. So uh, the bed crystalline structure, uh, they have ordered structure, and uh, if we treat them. Uh, at high temperature, they can be transformed into graphitized carbon. Therefore, uh, several years ago, uh, other researchers, they have reported the uh, graphitization of natural silk fibers into a, a conductive uh, carbon fiber. So uh, besides this, uh, we know uh, the natural silk fiber can be uh, made into various silk woven fabric. So uh, every uh, kind of silk woven fabric can be found on the uh, market with a uh, very cheap, uh, with, uh, with a very uh, low for a price. So uh, this give us opportunity to thinking about uh, if we can transform silk fabric directly into a uh, conductive um, fabric. Therefore, we tried uh, this process. We used commercial silk fabric uh, bought um, directly on market and uh, uh, treat it at high temperature in inert gas. In this case, we realized its uh, graphitization into an integrated carbon fabric. So uh, here shows uh, our first result uh, of using uh, the plain woven fabric and uh, treat it into a conductive carbon fabric. 
So uh, here shows the pristine silk fabric, and this is the carbonized one, and uh, uh, this uh, is the uh, carbon. Uh, carbonized fabric encapsulated in uh, elastic polymer. So uh, it can be worked as a flexible string sensor. Actually, uh, this process, it seems very uh, simple. However, it's not easy to get this result because, um, because from an uh, integrated silk fabric, uh, if we want to get integrated carbonized silk fabric, with the uh, microstructure uh, remained, we need to design the um, uh, uh, design the high temperature treat process with a very low uh, treating speed, and we must considering the uh, depolarization of the silk fibrin and uh, uh, and uh, um, keep long time on uh, some uh, on some unique. Uh, temperature point. So uh, we need to design the um, program. Um, by this, uh, we got uh, um, carbonized silk fabric and uh, uh, we studied the working mechanism of the string sensor. The string sensor needs to be uh, trained before use um, by uh, several stretching process. So uh, at the first stretching process, actually, the uh, carbonized silk fabric, it uh, can be easily broken into, uh, into this kind of structures. So um, the fibers uh, parallel to the tensile uh, string uh, direction can be broken. Uh, then uh, they can form uh, islands and the uh, bridge and the sun bridge. So this kind of structure can be remained during the uh, following stretching releasing process. So uh, in, in the sub, sub, uh, subsequent stretch, stretching process, uh, the structure will be remained. Uh, and uh, this structure can provide the uh, high sensitivity and the large uh, stretchability to the string sensor. So the high sensitivity came from the broken fibers along the tensile uh, direction. So the uh, ultra high stretchability came from the uh, spreading of the fiber of the yarns um, perpendicular to the direction of the tensile string. And uh, uh, this structure also shows very high stability during the subsequent stretching and releasing process. So uh, with this, uh, we, uh, we studied the uh, uh, performance of different woven structures, including the silk gauget structure, the plain wave structure, and the setting wave structure, and the tuile wave structure. We can see from this curve, different structure uh, give different performance. Um, but for all these um, so all these string sensors based on the tactile structure, uh, say, so they have a uh, very high sensitivity and a relatively large tensile string. So uh, for example, for the plain wool silk fabric, uh, the string sensor can be stretched up to five times of its original length. And uh, during all this um, range, it shows high sensitivity. Uh, so, uh, Sorry. So here shows the performance comparison of our sensor compared with previously reported ones. So the red star is our result. We can see um, the uh, the results from the um, from the woven structure uh, from the string sensors made from woven structure. They uh, can feel the, uh, the empty uh, area during this plot. So this kind of string sensor simultaneously possess high sensitivity and uh, uh, large stretchability. So based on its high sensitivity, this string sensor can be used to monitor sub, sub, uh, subtle signals, such as the uh, uh, micro expression on face. So uh, this is the blinking of eye. And also if we put it on the um, 
on on our arm, it can be used to monitor pulse. Uh, they can show detailed peaks uh, during each um, pulse. So uh, it they, they can also be used to monitor breath uh, and the phonation and uh, to monitor sound wave. So uh, this uh, came from its high sensitivity. Besides, because it has a very large stretchability, they can be used to monitor a large human motion. For example, uh, so uh, it can be used to monitor the extending, matching, jumping, and the scorching uh, of uh, our leg. Uh, also, it can be used to monitor figure joint motion. Uh, so uh, if we combine it with the software, uh, it can be used for the reconstruction of human motion. Uh, so actually, uh, uh, carbonization of fabric um, this strategy can be uh, widely applied on other materials and for other uh, other uh, electronics. For example, we have uh, realized the carbonization of coating fabric, uh, which is more cheaper than the uh, silk fabric. Also, uh, we have uh, realized the carbonization of model fabric. So this fabric show very good stretchability um, by itself and uh, uh, it uh, remains uh, stable resistance during the stretching. So it can be used as a stretchable electrode. Uh, besides, uh, we, also, uh, we can also design this uh, carbon fabric into electro, into uh, chemical sensors for monitoring some uh, chemicals. And we also develop new technique to, uh, to carbonization uh, tactile. So following is uh, two examples. So the first one is that um, based on the carbonized silk fabric, we uh, fabricated a sweat analysis patch. So this uh, carbon fabric, uh, based on its uh, structure, it shows good electrical conductivity. And also um, because it's transformed from silk, uh, it have done, uh, it, it have a uh, nitrogen doping. So it have rich active size for active size for electric, uh, for electric uh, chemical uh, reaction. Um, besides it also have good wettability. So uh, based on this, we can use the H as electrode for chemical sensors. Uh, here shows its uh, performance for, um, for the monitoring of glucose. So uh, based on uh, its performance on chemical sensors, we can use laser uh, writing technique to pattern the carbonized silk into uh, some uh, into complex uh, uh, into complex um, structures and made it into uh, uh, into uh, different sensors uh, and combine into it a multifunctional sensor. So here shows uh, all tactile chemical sensor for analysis of sweat. Uh, and based on this patch, we can realize the monitoring of six biomarkers. Um, uh, when uh, a people is uh, doing a sports. And here compares the performance of the sensor with HPLC MS results. It shows a uh, very good, uh, uh, it, it, uh, it, the results is inconsistent with the uh, HPLC. So uh, the second uh, example is that we developed a new technique for uh, the carbonization of tactile. Uh, here, we use laser writing technique and uh, directly uh, writing on, uh, uh, on Kevlar uh, tactile. And uh, uh, with this technique, we can, uh, we can write in various patterns and the front side and back sides is different. So it's a genius tactile. So by this, we can transform one side of the tactile into few layer graphing. And this graphing uh, is conductive and it, it can be uh, fabricated into devices. Uh, so uh, we studied the transformation, uh, the transformation uh, mechanism of the uh, tactile to graphing. Uh, 
and uh, uh, it's uh, it can uh, it prove our uh, our uh, propose that uh, the thermal that the photothermal effect induced by the laser can induce the decomposition of the Kevlar uh, tactile and it, uh, it can be finally transformed into graphene. So based on the Daniels tactile, we can uh, fabricate uh, various devices. For example, we can use it directly as a, a, a human skin electrode for the monitoring of ECG. So here shows the signals uh, from the ECG electrode. And we can also use it to uh, monitor some toxic uh, or uh, danger gas, such as uh, NO2. Um, so uh, these tactiles show very good um, selectivity uh, on the uh, NO2 uh, monitoring. So besides uh, using the uh, Daniels tactile as uh, electrode, we can fabricate a um, uh, zinc air battery. So this battery is flexible and rechargeable, and it can be made into various patterns. So based on the uh, battery and the, and the sensor, uh, we can uh, make a self-powered intelligent uh, protecting uh, clothes based on this uh, uh, laser writing uh, tactile. So, uh, so actually on the carbonized tactile, besides directly use the tactile for uh, sensors, we can also uh, combine the tactile with other uh, material. For example, we realized that the directly CVD glues of carbon nanotube on the carbonized silk fabric and uh, uh, demonstrated the uh, fabrication of uh, uh, highly flexible, high sensitive gas sensors. So uh, here, uh, this idea came from the um, spider's fluffy hair. So actually, on the um, leg of on on the leg of some spiders, there's uh, many many uh, fluffy hairs. So uh, the function of this hair, one main function of this hair, is that to monitor the approach of uh, insects. So uh, the airflow induced by the insects can you can uh, can be uh, catched by the uh, fluffy hair of the spiders. So inspired by this, we designed a highly sensitive gas flow sensor uh, based on the uh, tact conductive tactile. So firstly, we uh, realized the directly glues of carbon nanotube on the uh, conductive silk fabric. So we can see this structure is very similar to the uh, spider's fluffy hair. So uh, here shows the fabrication process of the uh, of the uh, gas flow sensor. So actually, the carbonization and the growth of carbon nanotube can be uh, can be done in uh, one step. So uh, you directly using pristine silk fabric and uh, um, uh, apply some catalyst on this fabric. So we can directly got uh, carbon nanotube CNTs on uh, carbonized silk fabric. And uh, uh, based on this, uh, we, can, uh, we can further um, uh, fabricate some electrodes with uh, laser uh, writing technique and to got a tactile uh, sensor. So here shows a very flexible airflow sensor based on the fabric. Uh, so airflow sensor uh, shows very high sensitivity and uh, they can be monitored um, airflows from different angles. Also, it has fast response. So um, this, plot, this plot compares the performance of our sensor with other reported sensors. We can see uh, this sensor show a very quick response time and also show low det detection limit. Uh, and this sensor, because it's good flexibility, uh, it can show a good stability uh, during or after bending. 
so uh, we studied the working mechanism of this uh, gas flow sensor. So uh, the uh, carbon nanotube, uh, the fluffy like carbon nanotube on the silk, uh, on the carbonized conductive uh, fibers um, play a very uh, important role. Uh, so actually, with the carbon nanotube on the fabric, the sensor show high sensitivity. If we didn't glue the carbon nanotube on the sensor, the sensor will show low uh, sensitivity. But this sensor can have larger uh, detecting range for the gas flow. So based on this, we can design integrated airflow detection uh, uh, systems to uh, make it into a uh, into a, a sensor system which have high sensitivity and the wide uh, workable range. So uh, based on this here, we show application of our uh, airflow detection systems. For example, we can detect the airflow change from a uh, low airflow to large airflow, or to large airf airflow to uh, uh, without airflow. So uh, we can directly transform the uh, airflow change into, uh, into uh, uh, the turn on or turn off of a light. So besides, uh, we can uh, put, uh, we can integrate uh, this uh, sensor on the uh, on the clothes. So um, by using uh, using this H cam, so this sensor can uh, can uh, play some sound when uh, a fast moving uh, body uh, pass uh, uh, pass by. Uh, a person, so it can be used to help blind people uh, for an uh, alert or danger. Uh, so uh, now let's move to the second part. Uh, I will uh, I will try to save time. So the second part is nanocarbon silk hybrid materials for smart electronics. So. Um, uh, you can see we have transformed the natural silk fabric to carbonate silk fabric. But during this process, the good mechanical properties of the uh, silk have been largely lost. So uh, we want to combine the um, conductive nanocarbons with silk to keep uh, the uh, to keep the advantages of both uh, component. So our first uh, approach we have developed several years ago is directly feeding nanocarbons to silk worm. During, uh, the, uh, during the feeding of silk worm, we uh, just uh, separate carbon nanotubes and graphene onto the leaves, and the silk worm eat the leaf. So they produce silk fibers, uh, which uh, have uh, which have the nanocarbon, which contains the nanocarbons. So uh, the fibers, uh, the fibers uh, do not show any difference in uh, its uh, appearance. So, uh, but if we measure the mechanical properties of, of the fibers, we can observe the highly uh, enhanced mechanical property. Uh, however, these fibers uh, are difficult to uh, be uh, made into conductive fibers because the, the content of the nanocarbons are very uh, limited uh, in this process. So, uh, so in order to get conductive silk uh, fibers, we developed another um, post-treatment approach. In this approach, we made into the silk uh, fibers into solution and uh, um, using uh, electro uh, spinning technique, we made them into nanofibers and uh, directly coating this kind of uh, silk nanofibers on the outside of carbon nanotube fibers. So this fiber have a, uh, have a, um, insulate, have a insulate uh, silk uh, shells, but have a conductive um, carbon nanotube call. So uh, this uh, fiber show uh, very uh, good flexibility and uh, uh, it, can, uh, it, uh, it can have very uh, good conductivity and also have an uh, insulate shells. Uh, so this fiber can also be uh, made into waterproof fibers by uh, treat the uh, silk fibers uh, by a moderate 
uh, temperature. So uh, we have uh, made these fibers into a circle and show its application uh, in uh, wireless charging. Uh, in order to um, fabricate conductive fibers uh, uh, more quickly, we uh, further developed the um, printing technique for uh, directly printing our conductive fibers on tactile. In this case, we first uh, designed uh, carbon nanotube ink and silk ink. So using this ink, uh, we, uh, uh, we, we further uh, integrate, integrate a coactile spindle uh, onto a three-dimensional uh, printer. So uh, we use the silk uh, fibrillin ink uh, at the uh, outer layer and the carbon nanotube ink at the inner layer. During this process, we can uh, directly got uh, uh, coal fibers by, uh, mm, uh, by uh, direct, directly writing uh, any uh, flexible uh, substrate. So here shows uh, the um, patterns can be customer designed and the uh, structures show good flexibility. So we have demonstrated the application of this uh, strategy for fabricating for fabric for fabrication of smart tactile uh, as a, a self-powered tactile. So uh, in this case, uh, we print a, a supercapacitor and uh, and a nano generator. Uh, so these clothes can uh, collect the human motion energy and to power small devices. Further, uh, we, uh, during the printing of the nanocarbon materials, we found uh, a very interesting self-assemble uh, phenomena. Uh, during three-dimensional printing of two-dimensional nanocarbon uh, materials, uh, the nanocarbon two-dimensional two uh, flakes can be self-assembled into layered structure. So uh, we can design the uh, the, uh, the printing pass the printing uh, way uh, during this process. Uh, we can uh, print one layer in a direction and print another uh, another layer in another direction. So in this case, uh, these uh, structures can be uh, made into um, shape more following uh, architecture. Uh, so, uh, so this architecture can be response to different uh, stimuli, such as they can uh, be uh, reformed um, by the uh, stimuli of water, uh, both liquid and vapor, and also it can respond to heat and light. So here shows uh, some uh, uh, three-dimensional architectures uh, produced by this technique. So um, we further find that if we use a viscous, uh, is, uh, if we use highly uh, viscous uh, matrix during the printing of two-dimensional materials, uh, the printed um, uh, the printed ribbon can form uh, a symmetrically uh, ribbon uh, with gridded structure. So uh, this structure actually uh, it can be uh, formed in uh, it can be formed uh, like uh, this. So this, uh, this structure can be spontaneously transformed into spring structure um, if we put it in water because it's uh, asymmetrically uh, self-assembled structure. So uh, this spring uh, is ultra stretchable besides because uh, be, uh, be, besides uh, if we choose a uh, situable uh, matrix, so this spring, it can be uh, iron uh, conductive. So uh, based on this uh, stretchable and iron conductive structure, we can use it as a neural electrode. For example, we uh, put this uh, material, we connected this material with the nerve of a frog and uh, uh, this um, this uh, fiber can uh, catch the uh, signal uh, of the uh, of the narrow um, with very uh, high uh, with very uh, good uh, signal to a uh, north. So here shows the comparison of this 
uh, the, com the comparison of the performance of this spring with the, uh, with the normal PT electrode. So we can see uh, the colored uh, curve, they show um, obviously a larger signals uh, compared to the PT wires. So uh, besides the printing of fibers, we can also uh, based, uh, we can also, um, we can also uh, make uh, film um, devices based on the uh, combination of nanocarbon with silk. For example, uh, we have combined uh, graphene with silk fibrolin and uh, uh, made them into a solution. So this solution can be used to, uh, to uh, make any uh, pattern of uh, composite. So this composite is conductive, so it can be used to monitor uh, the ECG signal and monitor temperature and humidity. So uh, based on this, we can realize uh, the application uh, directly at the uh, ETA2. And uh, uh, besides, because uh, the uh, unique um, unique component of this eta 2 it's a uh, silk fibrolin and the graphene and uh, uh, and the c ion so uh, this um, system can be self healable if it's broken so it can be self healed by uh, just drop uh, by uh, by a water drop uh, very quickly um, so uh, all the above is using silk fibrolin. Uh, recently, we also found that silk serosin can also be uh, can can also be combined with carbon nanotube to show uh, very good uh, functions. So, for example, uh, silk serosin, uh, silk uh, serosin, uh, the serosin based on its uh, molecular structure, it have uh, it have uh, many. Uh, water, it have many uh, hydrophilic uh, function group. So based on this, it can be used as a medium for the dispersion of carbon nanotubes in water. So only by use uh, cyrosin and carbon nanotube, a very stable uh, conductive ink can be uh, obtained. So uh, this ink show, uh, good, uh, show good stability and we also studied the mechanism for the uh, dispersion. So using this ink, uh, we studied uh, we studied the property of this ink. So um, because um, there are no other uh, chemicals uh, in this ink, uh, and also cyrosin have very good biocompatibility. So this ink show a uh, very good high uh, bi uh, biocompatibility. Compatibility, and this ink can be used for various uh, printing techniques, such as inkjet printing and screen printing and directly writing. And uh, uh, this conductive ink uh, can be used for the fabrication of uh, various sensors on uh, clothes. Uh, so. Uh, of course, uh, this the cyrosine can also be combined with graphene. So recently, we studied the uh, combination of cyrosine and graphene. We uh, we try to solve the problem for uh, the washing of the uh, of the tactile decorated with this, this ink. So uh, by introducing a uh, new uh, chemicals for uh, cross-linking of the uh, graphene with the tactile, we can got a washable conductive tactile for smart uh, applications. So uh, we demonstrated uh, the application of this conductive tactile uh, in uh, some smart uh, equipment. Uh, so with this, I would like to uh, give a brief summary. Uh, basically, we based on SP2 carbon materials, which are carbon nanotube and graphene, and to develop smart systems and tactiles. We uh, have, uh, so in this talk, I have introduced our results on high article carbon fabrics uh, for the uh, application in variable uh, string sensors and uh, other uh, sensors such as chemical sensors. And also we have combined nanocarbons with silk to realize the uh, printing of silk uh, 
the printing of fibers, all the um, electronic skin, all the, all the um, fabrication of conductive uh, tactiles for uh, smart applications. So with this, I would like to thank all my students and my collaborators. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for that a beautiful talk. And let me share my screen again here. Uh, there we go. Uh, let me share my screen again here with the questions. Uh, uh, PowerPoint. There we go. All right. Well, that was that was just uh, a terrific. First, I have a, a question from. Uh, my uh, co-host, uh, Professor uh, Mizo Kim, who asked what the technological and safety challenges are for silk-based uh, devices and uh, mass production. Uh, so uh, for the safe, uh, it means uh, the safe for the human. Uh, if this, uh, if we use a carbonized silk fabric, it's, uh, it's uh, very safe. And uh, we can, uh, because uh, silk fibers have been carbonized many, many years ago, and they can be used as, um, uh, as uh, the, uh, as the treatment some, of some uh, hurt on human skin. So the carbonized silk, silk material is very safe. But for the uh, carbon nanotube and graphene, I think it's an open question. Uh, if, we, um, if we just use uh, this material on human skin, I do not know its safeness. But uh, recently, uh, we, have, uh, we, we have tried to investigate uh, this problem by uh, growth some cells on these materials. Uh, so for our materials, uh, which uh, um, for our materials for the you know, fibroling or sericin, uh, it's composite with the carbon nanotube and graphene. We observed the growth of cell is very uh, uh, healthy on this on the composite uh, material. So uh, I think for the composite, it's okay, but uh, for uh, for only the uh, nanocarbons, I do not know. Uh, and for the mass production, uh, for for the carbonization uh, process, I I think it can be a mass um, product, uh, because we can got a very uh, large area and very uniform silk fabric directly on market um, with a low price. Uh, so uh, this can be a mass pro product. Uh, but uh, it's only my imagine. We do not try very, very uh, area till now. Yeah, thank you. Very good. Uh, and then our first uh, question from the audience is, uh, Professor Zhang, for the carbonized silk fibers, can they be washed and what are their lifetimes? Uh, for the, oh, uh, for the carbonized, uh, for, for the, uh, for the carbonized silk fabric, uh, actually we uh, use it uh, uh, mainly by encapsulate it in, uh, uh, in, in silicon polymer uh, because the silk fabric, when we carbonize it, it's very uh, fragile and it's easy to be break. So uh, we, we must uh, encapsulate it in a, a polymer. Uh, so. Uh, actually, uh, so this is also the origin of the high sensitivity of the sensor because it's very fragile. So when we stretch uh, the, uh, the, the, the fabric encapsulated in the polymer, it can be uh, broken into many, many small parts. So uh, this uh, structure um, provides the high sensitivity of the sensor. So it cannot. So this um, this strain sensor encapsulated in the um, polymer can be washed, but uh, the pristine silk, uh, carbonized silk fabric cannot be washed. I think. Yeah, thank you. That actually uh, brings us to the next question, uh, which is: If high sensitivity is mostly based on breaking fibers, how is it uh, stable and repeatable? And uh, how is the uniformity of different sensors 
uh, based on that uh, approach? Yeah, very, very good question. Uh, so uh, as I said, uh, we must train the sensor before, uh, uh, before practically application. So uh, during the training process, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the broken structure can be, uh, can be uh, made into the final structure. They will not change anymore during the following uh, stretching and the releasing. So it's very stable. Uh, we have measured up to, uh, up to 30,000 times. Uh, after 30,000 uh, cycling, it's very stable. Um, yeah, but uh, for the uh, for uh, for the repeatability uh, uh, among different sensors, yeah, sometimes they have uh, they have some uh, some uh, small difference um, from this sensor to another sensor. So um, before we use it, uh, we should uh, calibrate each sensor to get its curve. Mm -hmm. But uh, for the checking, for the uh, for only the checking of the change, for example, we only to check the pulse. We do not know. Uh, we do not need to know the detail, the resistance, and the sensitivity. We only need to uh, catch the peaks and the uh, speed. So in this case, we do not uh, focus on uh, the uh, on the difference uh, of each sensor. Yeah. Thank you. Very good. And then the, uh, the third question from the audience, uh, it's great to use natural materials like silk to make electronic devices. Do you think it's possible to make implantable sensors from them? Yeah, uh, thank you. Great question. Uh, uh, so um, I, uh, so one of our, uh, one of my wish is to apply the silk materials into uh, implantable sensors. Uh, so uh, the first try of us is uh, the neural, uh, neural electrode, but uh, it's uh, kind of difficult uh, for my group to uh, do, uh, uh, do deeper study in this area because uh, we do not have uh, bio uh, background till now. Uh, so if we can have some collaborators to um, explore the application of these materials in implantable uh, devices, I will be very happy to uh, support. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know just the person to connect you with, and we'll do that after the talks. <laughs> well, let's uh, move on to the uh, next slide. And thank you for this uh, terrific lecture. Uh, we'll look forward to a perspective from you on this a topic and ACS Nano to to bookend. You showed the first the uh, the first paper uh, you published with us uh, quite some uh, years ago, and you've done so much since then. Very exciting uh, work, and we're looking forward to much more from you, and also to your wisdom, uh, along with our uh, fellow speakers and uh, my co-host uh, Professor uh, Mizo Kim uh, on our uh, Rising Star Board. Uh, so thank you so much for this beautiful talk. We'll look forward to seeing you in person where we would normally hand you a, a plaque, but uh, for now, uh, we have this electronic